and blast beats for another wonderful week i'm margie and i am joined by two lovely other humans oh g'day i'm josh i'm oh, grant nice <laughs> to meet you for the episode five for the fifth time hopefully <laughs> for the fifth time it's very very good to be here as always uh we're gonna start uh off the the show as we always do talking about the nerdiest thing that we've done this week and grant let's let's start with you what is uh what is the nerdiest thing that you've done this week well, we're going to have a throwback to, I think it was the first of the second episode. It was the second episode when we talked about Let Me Solo Her. Now, yeah. like, obviously, because we record <laughs> these episodes in, in uh, you know, ahead of time, it's sometimes old news when it comes out. But the the guy who played as Let Me Solo Her, he, he essentially, he ended up being the boss a thousand times. So Bandai, <laughs> what they've done is they've sent him a literal sword to his house, inscri- like inscribed and everything. It's inscribed with the words "Rise Tarnished," which is like the <laughs> to like get yourself going. It's like in the game, like when you die, like you come back. It says like "Rise Tarnished." <laughs> so, and he's uh, he's yeah. So his quote was, "Thank you, Bandai and Elden Ring, for giving me this gift, congratulating me for being let me solo her." I can still remember my first experience with the Soulsborne series, almost quitting because of some. Uh, a box called Ludex Gundir, which is in Dark Souls 3. I'm glad I persisted and went on to enjoy the game because in this community is one of the most passionate and dedicated I've ever seen. And essentially, yeah, so they've just mailed him, like we'll put it in the show notes, like the pictures of like this full-on like Hala Gondora sword that he's got. It looks like it's a full-size sword. It's in like this case, like they've shipped out. It's got like, like a, like it's got like a, like a, plaque of wood like with burnt in of like the face of the boss that he's killed a thousand times because she's the heart like, she's the hardest boss in the game but also like Sorry. it's optional as well like you don't have to beat her to beat the game it's just an optional <laughs> boss as well so it's <laughs> awesome that he's been rewarded yeah in the heralded it makes it so for much doing better. this yeah yeah and that was that was yeah just yeah this week so by the time this comes out i'm sure um it'd be old news to everyone else but it's still cool <laughs> i thought you were coming out as him for a second and i, was oh, like, I oh. wish no, i don't have the time for that <laughs> <laughs> excellent um uh, i'll go next uh mm. i had the flu a week and not even the spicy cough so i didn't even get like the vindication of being sick you know like oh, i've got covid like you know nah. i just had the yeah. regular pleb flu so i used this opportunity to catch up on some things uh uh i finally finished stranger things their latest season that's come out oh, and nice. uh the boys and obi-wan oh, it's a couple oh, of things um still Eddie Munson, the last episode of the boys oh. Eddie Munson can fucking get it um, if I went to high school with, the, with someone like Eddie Munson, you know, I would have like sexually harassed that poor child. Um, and also where is my Hellfire Club shirt? Because obviously important. Um, oh, they're printing them everywhere now. I'm sure you'd be able to get one. Yeah. I need a customized Hellfire shirt with like a cat on there. Um, nice. get the paint and then, shirt. and then, um, Obi-Wan, that was wholesome fan service and mm. people who complained about it. I'm like, what did you do? You expect a new plot line to arise. It's like, come on, we already know where it's going to go. And the boys wasn't as gruesome as it could have been. Like I expected a lot worse from this season <laughs> um, and nothing, nothing will ever compare to the whale scene. Let's just say that. I haven't um, watched the last episode yet. I've watched the rest of it and oh, it's the season three of the boys is good. And yeah, I've I kind heard- of... Oh, sorry, so because I kind of agree with you on the Obi Wan thing, but I also feel like it could have been condensed. I think they, for what the plot was, it was dragged out a little too long. I think the plot was still good, but they dragged it out more than it should have been. I reckon it could have been like two movie lengths. Yeah. Well, the, D- Disney stopped. Some dude it. did it. Some dude actually cut uh, Obi Wan into a two hour film and put it up on the internet, and Disney sued the dude and took it down. I, I never got to see it. <laughs> I haven't, like, it's probably still up there somewhere, but uh, yeah, someone actually did it. And apparently, it is really, really good. good. I well, loved I, the ending of that. I thought the ending of yeah. Obi Wan was oh, I, great. I enjoyed the whole thing because, like, all like my yeah. close friends, like, we, we get together like every Wednesday when it comes out, we watch the new episode, and nice. some of them are a bit disappointed because it did, I feel like. It dragged its boots a little bit at some point. Like it was good world building, but I think 
the the pacing was a little off for me, but I think the plot was good still. I enjoyed mm. the plot. I enjoyed it. And I could say one of the children actors who was a female, hopefully that's not a spoiler. Um I could I could I could watch that kid all day. That was <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect well, casting and writing. We all I'm... we all thought she was um Nell from Haunting a Hill House and then we got we're like, oh wait, no, it's just some other child. It just turns out children look the same. <laughs> <laughs> also, I read like a scathing comment about the boy child actor. I'll have to see if I could find it, but it teased him really well <laughs> oh, I, yeah no he did look like a huge nerd but not in the good something way. about like i bet he plays with model trains <laughs> yeah. and, what about, and what about you josh uh you play with any model trains this week i i unfortunately have not uh played any model trains this week you know uh through a a heavy depressive episode. I uh, upped my game. I was talking about that game satisfaction that I've been addicted to. I've almost ticked over the uh, 100 hour mark at this point in time because I uh, I needed something to take my mind off life for the last couple of days. But I also found myself going through a really, really deep YouTube hole of people that have made the most fucking incredible factories. Because like when you play for the first time, like, you know, you just kind of putting like conveyor belts everywhere and pipes everywhere and it just looks like spaghetti but then there are people on the internet who have like there's one that i was watching earlier where this person pretty much made it look like uh the base from stargate atlantis and like the the amount of work that went into even like the most amazing details like they went to like basically the entire map is just covered in different factories they have this like massive train station that has I can't remember what station it is, but you know, there is like an old photo from like, like 1920s, 1930s of a train that smashed through the top of a big brick train station and is like hanging down over the platform below it. It's uh, oh. I've seen I've seen it somewhere before. It's it's a yeah. It's this like classic thing. Is like it must have been like a two story train station, and a train's gone through the top of it, hanging out. And the person built a train station with a train hanging out of it as like an ode yeah, to this that's photo. Wicked. Okay, that's cool. And yeah, it was it was really really impressive. So yeah, so I've gone down a deep dark hole on people that have done some incredible things and satisfactory, but that is uh is my segue also into uh the the medium beat for this week which i, I i'm calling uh nerd of the week because i think every now and again we just need to give uh a nerd some props you know and uh <laughs> yeah I, like we'll, the noise. we'll make up some like real <laughs> shitty trophy or something like that i'll do some terrible photoshop job and um yeah, we yeah but promise uh, we won't bully him like the child from star wars we were talking about before <laughs> I make no promises. I'm a mean nerd. <laughs> but, yeah, we're uh, cool I'm, nerds. <laughs> uh, through this, like, through going through all these, like, amazing, uh, you know, satisfactory builds, I came across the complete opposite of an amazing, I mean, technically amazing, but in a very, 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 very different way. So I came across, uh, it, literally, I, all I could find of his name is, he's literally on YouTube, he's called Some Guy Called Josh. He has a, a YouTube channel called you. Let's, Yeah. He has a YouTube channel called Let's Game It Out, which is pretty much Grant's nightmare. Uh when we were talking about the uh the Sims universe being the worst universe you can wake up to. You <laughs> you wouldn't want to be an NPC <laughs> in any of this dude's games. Cause basically he he plays a whole bunch of uh like simulators and like like yeah. open sandbox sort of things. So he plays like Planet Zoo, he plays Satisfactory, he plays Astroneer, he played Ty some all the tycoons. Yeah, all Tropico. the tycoons and stuff like that. But yeah, so his his YouTube videos are stuff like I abducted my entire neighborhood in The Sims 4. Uh I shoplifted <laughs> my way to a million dollars. My my uh, my favorite video though is called I built an unethical zoo that's an actual prison. And, <laughs> and he literally built this like he gets this big open space and then he builds this like massive sort of like for like moat around it. You've got to get a boat over to it. And then he he named this zoo Poor Shank Zoo. And he literally just like he had like solitary for some of these uh, some of these animals, and then he literally built this fucking huge prison, like this massive brick prison, complete with cells and everything, and then just put animals into it. <laughs> but, I think I love it. <laughs> yeah. But my like my favorite thing about him though is there was a conversation I was 
actually maybe we were having it. I can't even remember. We've had a lot of conversations now, but there, there was a conversation I had recently where it's like a lot of media that's consumed on the internet is actually more about personality than content. Like there's, I know that there's people that listen to this podcast that aren't nerds at all, but just enjoy us riffing back and forth. And I think that's the same for this guy as well. Cause his personality is just phenomenal. Like it's so, so funny. He's so reverent. He's so sarcastic about everything. It's like, yeah, it's, it's just, it made me want to watch more because of his personality. Like it was just some kid being a dick on the internet and thought he was being funny. But this dude has this real like tongue in cheek, sarcastic way of delivering. That's just phenomenal. And, um, yeah, it's um, it's really that. really sick. So yeah, I'll I'll put the the link to this YouTube channel in the show notes as well. Yeah, it's called Let's Game and Out. L- literally, if you go to the about, like it doesn't even have his real name. It just says some guy <laughs> called Josh. Uh, so shout out to some guy called Josh because he's my nerd of the week. If you love that, what you need to do is go look up one of my personal favorites. He's a guy called the Spiffing Brit, and all he <laughs> all he all he does is play all those games, Tropico. Uh, Sim City, Civ Six, and all that, and just does like it's pretty much where I got my idea for not wanting to be an NPC in the <laughs> Sims universe. <laughs> he, did, he did this uh, one episode where he tried to make his way to a million dollars, but his Sim couldn't leave the square that it spawned in. <laughs> so what he's done is he's like built this like room, or he's like wall, like put like like valet like rope around him. <laughs> put a bath and a fridge on the outside and then just like <laughs> consequently just kept on like taking like photos of himself and like selling his <laughs> selfies on the internet as soon as he could buy a better camera and did the whole thing while he was standing in this one spot. And that's just one of his like hundreds of videos of him just exploiting games. I like, feel yeah. like I should have taken this approach when in grade 10, they made us play Roller Coaster Tycoon as part of our social studies yeah. course and we were obsessed <laughs> on it. Public education. But I feel like this is the approach I should have taken instead of well, building well, roller coasters that fly off the end. Well, that's what he does. Like he, <laughs> does he, had, he has an episode for Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, but what he does is essentially in the game, once people have decided to come to the park, they can't back out of it. So once you have people walking towards the gate, what you do is you up the price. They have to pay it because the, the game has already committed them to entering the park. <laughs> so you make shit loads of money off of that. And you just, you delete all the toilets until you wait for someone, like everyone needs to go to the toilet. Then you put a toilet down. And once they've started walking towards the toilet, they're committed to it. Then you put a price on the toilet. So they have to pay to go to the toilet. That's amazing. And it's just like, there's no rides in the park, but because people have come, like, you put a ride down so the people come and you delete the ride, but because they're already committed to entering the park, <laughs> they're already in there. There's no exit in the park, so they can't leave. And if anyone becomes dissatisfied with the park, he picks them up and puts them on this like elevated platform <laughs> and it just leaves them up there until they're like, they starve to death. Yeah, it's, it's cold. Yeah, you'll, if, if you like, if you like this, um, yeah, some guy named Josh, definitely the spiffing Brit is one for you. He's my I, personal favorite. I also love that name. The spiffing Brit is an amazing name. Uh, you, the only thing is you'd maybe be a little offended because his main shtick is uh, Yorkshire tea. He talks about Yorkshire tea all the time, and even though he's not sponsored by them, and he's like he's not small either. He's got like a, like a million subscribers. Like he does well, but Amazing. he um, yeah, he always talks about like um, Yorkshire tea, and in the bottom, just this big thing is like not sponsored by Yorkshire tea. <laughs> but, yeah, he he talks about his uh, his mortal enemies being the coffee drinkers, which uh, I know that at least you and I. Uh, massive coffee drinkers. And oh, I assume Mar- 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 I, also I, the same. I'm, I'm, I'm a tea drinker. I, oh, I okay. So yeah, you're a coffee. Yeah, yeah you're a spit. We've got yeah. beef. I am. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll meet you in the back alley. Yeah. I mean, I do, I do chug something, uh, that uh, something that rhymes with con- conch hero. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do I do live off that liquid. Did you no, say that doesn't even rhyme. Hero? <laughs> I tried to rhyme. I said conk, but it doesn't even rhyme. Doesn't Broke rhyme, hero. Rhyme there you all. go. Broke hero, right? It's Broke that's hero. what I live off. <laughs> Broke hero. <laughs> Broke hero. That's me. I love that. I um, love on that, that note, <laughs> should we should we talk about uh <laughs> what we're talking about this episode? The or topic nah. of the week. Yeah, I mean, uh, eventually. Let's talk we'll, about we'll more spiffing Brits. We 100% could talk about spiffing Brits. Maybe that's, that's the, uh, I think that's an episode in itself, though. 
honestly, I, I could do a whole episode on his I'm stuff. actually like, a hilarious. little bit upset, though, uh, for your Nerd of the Week, that we didn't choose the uh, – so this week with all the James Webb telescope pictures have come out, and I'm oh, surprised you didn't yeah, choose one so of those good. nerds because those are some fucking good nerds. Yeah, 100%. Th- is hard. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we, we could give, like, a, you know, a conciliary awards to them as well because those James Webb <laughs> Consul- photos are so Yeah, you guys hot. went – I know. I like the one that looks like the bench top. <laughs> mm. I also mm. like the, like, I don't know if I can get away with saying this, but far out it must make Christians feel dumb seeing this shit. <laughs> 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 no, God created all of that, man. It's just glitter and smoke machine. That's... But like, I've been like, because I listen to so many history podcasts and like recently I've listened to one on uh, Galileo. And so obviously like, he didn't invent the telescope, but he really, really propelled the technology of the telescope. Yeah. And then he figured out, oh, wait, Jupiter's got like a shitload of moons. Yeah. And then everyone's like, oh, he's like, oh, well, if Jupiter has moons and they orbit the uh, orbit Jupiter, that means everything doesn't orbit Earth, which means um, that, wait, we're not the center of the universe. And then the Catholic <laughs> Church were like, right. <laughs> yeah, they 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 had two inquisitions on him. Luckily, he was friends with the Pope. But uh, yeah, essentially, <laughs> essentially, they at the end of the day, they told him to write a book so he doesn't get executed. He had to write a book that was <laughs> supposed to be balanced between heliocentrism, which is like uh, the sun is the center of the universe, yeah. and geocentrism, which is the, the Earth, Earth is, is the center of the, of the universe. Of the universe. Yeah. But the way he wrote it, he's like, yeah, I'll write it balanced, you know, I'm, no, I'm not impartial. But because the way books are written back then, kind of like Socrates, it's a dialogue of two people talking to each other and having a debate. And basically the guy who's going, uh, is arguing for geocentrism is like the Latin transcription <laughs> for simpleton. <laughs> like his, name is, <laughs> like, his name is like Simplosus or something like that. Like he's basically, he's called simpleton. <laughs> and then they're like, um, we can't be friends anymore. You're excommunicated from the church. Go research something else. You're lucky we're not like killing you right now. <laughs> Man, I wish all textbooks were just conversations. That'd be so much better. <laughs> <laughs> they take forever, though. I remember the first time I read uh, Plato's The Republic. It's just like it's just this back and forth. Like, like it takes like a chapter to make a really basic point. I, I, like, yeah, I, no, that's that's what I was thinking of because Socrates taught Plato. Yes, or was it the other way around? I can't remember. I get so confused. I think Plato yeah, no. So Socrates, Socrates started it all, and yeah, so oh, Socrates oh. taught Plato. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure so Socrates Plato- was, was the start. Oh, uh, hang on, I, I got to Google yes, this no. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Socrates uh, was the start be- <laughs> of the Western philosophy. Yes. Socrates- I'm going to be honest. I'm taking that from the movie Road Trip because that's what he I- says. He says that Socrates was the Vince McMahon of yes, uh, Plato- philosophy. Oh, my- oh, that's why. Okay, so. Socrates Plato's got a dumbass taught real name Plato well. taught Aristotle. I just back yeah, my and Aristotle <laughs> for some reason taught Alexander the Great, and he's like, "Yeah, that's cool, but I'm gonna conquer the world instead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go do gay things and war yeah, crimes." Uh, uh, what's, <laughs> what's the two Plato's best things a person real can do? Real name. He's got a really weird gay real name. War crimes. He balances out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Aristocles. Right. That's it. That's not that bad. Uh, Aristocles, yeah. Aristocles. Um, We've gone way off topic, though. <laughs> we tried. We tried to get onto topic, then we. <laughs> well, perhaps if you want to stay on topic, just like if I ever go to talk about history, cut me off because otherwise nah, I'll just nah, go we, down a rabbit we, hole. We love history. Yeah. Hmm. Um, we didn't right, get out so, of anything. So let's let's talk remakes. Mm. Beep, 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 beep. Not remakes. Speaking about re- history. Remakes. Speaking about history. <laughs> oh, hey. Speaking from history. Um, so what, what do you guys reckon defines a remake? Margie, I, I, I want to hear what you've got to say about this. You got, you got very excited about defining a remake specifically. So if, if you want to, if you want to shoebox That's this conversation, mindset. yeah, okay. if, if you were to shoebox this conversation, what, what exactly are we talking about when we talk about remakes? You got the hot seat on this one. Mm. Oh, it's, it's quite cold actually, but okay. So a remake <laughs> is, is is the remaking of a thing. In this case, we're talking about movies. Um, so it's not a reboot where you try and bring back a franchise by doing next generation Star Trek or where you start doing like a spinoff of the universe. And it's not a new series, or new movies and that. And it's not an adaptation. So we're not talking about like 
where you've taken it from a book to a film or where like something like that. I guess if there is like a TV series that got turned into a movie or a movie that got turned into a TV series, we could talk about that. Like, cause that's kind of like an adaptation, but yeah, I'd feel like that's, that's what the, I'm an thinking. adaptation. Oh, hello puppy. <laughs> Yeah, so, I, I think that's yeah. a good, I think that's a good definition as well. Yeah, so so as an example, we're we're not going to talk about uh, Dread versus Judge Dread because Dread is a reboot of it rather than a remake. Yeah. So to yes, speak. yeah, I, I feel like if it's a failed franchise and you redo it, it's a reboot. It has to be, <laughs> especially if it takes something different. And yeah. like and Dread, Carl Urban can't beat him. Oh, that's Man, so good. I, I love Carl I, Urban and everything. I, I really like the original of that. Like the original Judge Dredd was so tongue in cheek. It was so much fun. I <laughs> yeah, I feel Carl, like. Hello, Ben. Can you please adopt us? <laughs> yeah, I, well, I reckon if we, yeah, as I said, like, if we ever get je- guests, he's in New Zealand. Like, I, I'd love to get Carl Urban on here and talk about everything nerd. Doom, Judge Dredd, The Boys, Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. I'd also like Sam Neill because he runs a winery. Thor. Mm. <laughs> he's in everything. Dude has to be a massive nerd. I don't know if he's into metal, but he has to. He's obviously a massive nerd. He's obviously cool <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> Hence a nerd. All right. Well, I guess if we start with the with the I guess the the psychological question is why do you why do you reckon people feel the need to what what would drive a person to remake a film? Well, I think that remaking a film is this, is either driven by admiration or nostalgia of a certain th- thing that was made a long time ago, or as as unfortunate as it could be, like commercial benefit is a reason why money, people money, money. remake things. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like if if it's to be done right, it's got to be done with admiration and respect. You know, it needs the soul yeah. of the original property because I feel like if you're remaking a failed property, it's a reboot. Yeah. yeah. What, what yeah. do you think, Josh? Well, I, th- I think, yeah, I, th- I think Grant just nailed the thing that makes or breaks a remake is, is the knowledge of the original. Like you can't pretend that the original doesn't exist, but you also can't just shot for shot remake it like it it has exactly. to kind of it has to yeah a- acknowledge the original without kind of going like too hard over the top about it and like i think we ca- we kind of mentioned it in like the last episode but like the 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 perfect example of that is the the 2004 remake of dawn of the dead which had mm. so many nods to the original i think my my favorite part of that um, and it's something that not everyone would like pick up on, but, uh, there's a montage kind of near the start of like, like when everyone's kind of figuring out what's going on, it's on the news and whatnot. And they interview like an army general, a sheriff, and then a, uh, like a church minister. So the army general played the white cop in the original. The sheriff was Excellent. the, the, the biker. And he was also like Tom Savini is the biker, but he's also like the makeup artist of makeup artists for those times. He yeah. Did all Tom those Savini. I did, yeah. Tom is Savini he the one who painted, painted all the zombies blue? Cause uh, that's, yeah, he would have been. That's yeah, cause why, he... that's why I haven't watched the new Dawn of the Dead is because the I, I don't, blue. I don't think it was necessary because I think the blue body paint on the zombies was the right amount of terrifying and it was fucking great. <laughs> but, but also then, yeah, he the... blew up comic go- a comic book guy's spleen in the Simpsons. So he did. He blew up comic book guy's spleen in the Simpsons. <laughs> he, um, he was, Savini. <laughs> he was sex machine in, uh, from dust to dawn. Like Tom, Tom Savini is the fucking bomb. Uh, but yeah, then the then the like the church minister was the the African American cop from the original film, and so like they actually went out of their way to find those actors and give them little pieces. Like the African American cop even says the same line in the remake as he does in the original. Yeah, and so there's nice. these nods because I think I think that's the thing is if you ignore okay. if you ignore the ingrained fan base, then they're going to be the ones that are pissed off. Like like where like we're going to be your number one fans or your number one haters. And so you kind of have to, you have to nod toward the fan first. I will well, stop you there though, because I feel like if you do too much fan service, I personally think that the fans aren't always right and they don't know what they want. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like if you put too much fan service into something, it like ruins the vibe. Cause like then people were just like, something oh, for, there's nothing that's something for reboots. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like too much fan service is a bad thing. I think there's a balance that needs to be done. Like I'd say like mm-hmm. uh, Boba Fett, the, the book of Boba Fett, for example, I feel like there was, they've added so much fan service into that, that they've not bothered to put a decent plot. Like it was still good. 
I still liked it. But I think there was so much fan service in there that it took up more screen time than it needed to instead of advancing the plot with new exciting things to make yeah. it worth watching. True. Instead of just like, I'd just watch a YouTube compilation. I don't, I I don't really know if liked. you guys have seen the most recent Scream movie. Whatever no, it is, I haven't actually. Whichever one it is. But it it's very meta and self-aware. Like, and the entire time, like, it's about, like, the son, the daughter, some progeny, I can't remember, mm. of the original killer is involved. And it's them all talking about, like, well, it's got to be one of us. And then, like, it's, it has, just has, like, this really meta conversation about, like, that's the thing in the movies. Like you never do this and you never do this. So we can't do this. And it's like, it's really self. I, mean, I think it worked. I thought it was really. Oh, funny, I, th- I feel like, like the first one, the, I feel like the original because the scream, first scream is the was same. already it's like that. Yeah. yeah. It's very, but very it, it meta. Got even, it got even more self-aware. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but back to remaking stuff. <laughs> in my opinion, I think people, sometimes it's not for nostalgia. Um, I think, like maybe it's because of nostalgia, but maybe they think that like the story can be better told in our time. Yes. So they think like we've got CGI or better production and it'll enhance the movie. But mm. like realistically, I think a lot of the time it's because Hollywood is fucking lazy. And if you and if you've <laughs> yeah. got a cult, if you've got a cult classic. The people remaking it know they're going to sell tickets. Get money. Yeah. Like, like you, we didn't you, get the money on it the first time, but we can now. Yeah. Like we can, we can make some money out of this. We don't even have to rewrite the script much. Fuck it. Like <laughs> we'll just, and that's how they, and, and that's unfortunately like what happens with a lot of remakes, especially for horror movies. Yeah. Well, I, was, I was literally I, just about to say horror. A main psycho. Psycho. <laughs> no, I think not even psycho. The fog, like David Lynch's The Fog. I think the mm. first one bombed in the box office, but became a massive cult classic. So they remade it in 2004. It was shit. <laughs> is that is that the one with those giant bugs that live in the fog? No, that's the Stephen that's the, King's that's, the Mist. That's the Mist. Yeah, that's where yeah. I got confused as well. Yeah, the Mist <laughs> in the fog. Yeah, yeah. It's um, like I've nah, seen the, it. The, no, I haven't. Well, the Mist is like uh like eldritch horrors and like the ends like really wild, but the w- ends not in the book. But I guess that's an adaptions. Uh, episode. Yeah. It's a different episode, oh. so you, <laughs> you're you, gonna you have to come back for that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and making a remake work, I think nods to the original a hundred percent. But like, and I think a soundtrack is really important yes, as well. Absolutely. Like if notes to the original and the soundtrack and enhance it. <laughs> but for me, like the gold standard of in my opinion, the best remake of all time is The Mummy. (laughs) Um, Because it was originally a 1932 movie. Mm, And it went from a dude wrapped in bandages to them using what we now think of as janky CGI. But, like, there's still (laughs) nods to the original and stuff in there. But, like, it's different, you know? Like, and I, I just think that's, like what makes it work like and then not to the original, they did it but... again for money and they yeah. fucked it yeah well that, oh. that was it because it's, it's also the worst remake because the yes. new Tom version Cruise. of the mummy yeah. is so bad but i, th- I think that was considered for brendan ferries's role in the original mummy so no, there you go too short <laughs> <laughs> but no i i think i think that's also part of it the muggy as well is like it's when it's so good that you forget that it is a remake because i think another one that's one of my favorite probably most watched films of all time uh oceans 11 like most people oh, don't yes. remember that oceans it 11 is a-, is a remake like like the rat pack I- like sammy I- davis jr and all that where they they were in the original oceans 11 but oh my god that it doesn't yeah i know right but it doesn't hold a candle to the original like most people don't know the mummy's a remake um, yeah, yeah. That in my research for this episode i'm like oh i didn't know that was a remake it's, and, and yeah. then yeah the mummy especially like it's a remake and then another remake 10 years later <laughs> or even like say like like a movie that's like we've gone back to horror like fantastic movie like you got carrie mm. that's Did a they remake. remake it no they wait remake they... twice so like the original one's like 78 which is yeah. not good then they remade it in 2003, which I can't remember if I've seen the 2003 one. And then they remade it in like 2013. What? It was like 11 years or 2016 and like no one knows about it, so it must be hot garbage. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what do you think makes a remake really shit? What, what, what I think what makes, makes a remake shittest? really shit is a lack of understanding of what made the original great. Like mm, what yeah. made that vibe, what made it good. And personally, it's usually, especially if you're looking at horror movies, it's practical effects that made it so great and the the, digitifi- uh, the digitalizing of those effects is usually what ruins the vibe of those movies but yeah soundtrack is another big one and also like 
attachment to characters. Yeah. Uh, the actors embodying characters in an original movie can be hard to replace if they've done a good job. And if they've done a good job in the original movie, it never needed to be remade in the first place. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. my personal theory. Yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent. And I, I actually like. I have uh, three remakes to use as an example. Uh, uh, three, three remakes of three classics, and only one out of three of them was any good. And I realized why. Let's so, see if we can guess which one's good. <laughs> <laughs> so Friday the Thirteenth, Halloween, uh, and Nightmare on Elm Street. Three of absolute classics. Friday the Thirteenth is good. <laughs> See, no. I, I, I would f- I would feel like they're all reboots though because the franchise started stuttering and they just started again. I wouldn't feel like that's a remake. It's a reboot to me personally. I don't know. I, f- I, f- I feel, I feel like, like they're like closer they to remakes. remakes. Yeah, I feel yeah, like they're, they're, cause they're, cause they're, I, maybe they're both. Maybe they're like towing the line the of original. both because they're obviously trying to re-kick off the franchise that's petered yeah. off in like the, like – it's like those early early two thousand movies of like you fucking Jason X in space, I, which I is fantastic. <laughs> but it's That's like so it's 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 good because it's bad. Um, you got Child's Play and all those Chucky movies that came out like mm. late nineties, early two thousands. All the late nineties, early two thousands. Freddy versus uh, Freddy, like all the Freddy. Like Freddy versus not, Jason was sick. Yeah, Freddy versus Jason is sick. <laughs> but all those movies, they were there losing the camp but they're not quite scary they're almost like a chucky for example becomes a legitimate comedy in like bride and chucky it's just a comedy <laughs> movie it's not even a horror movie anymore <laughs> which is good but if you watch it as a comedy movie it's hilarious but i feel like all I those still can't kind do of dolls that's no thank you yeah <laughs> that's yeah. scary all those kinds of movies they've just um they've now kind of turned around and gone let's try it again so like i mm. feel like they are remakes because they've they are pretty faithful to the original source material, but at the same time, I feel like they're trying to re kick off the 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 IP. So I, I, yeah, I to I, me, I, they feel like reboots as well. That's fair. Mm. That's fair. I, yeah, I, I think I consider them remakes because they are so close to the source material. Like I like I think of a reboot more like Total Recall versus Total Recall. Like they're just pretty much two separate stories. Like they don't really have much yeah. to do with each other. Yeah. I have seen Whereas, I have seen neither of those. <laughs> the original is fantastic. The the new version of it is. Yeah, whatever. Do you know but- what's funny? I've actually <laughs> s- somehow, like, in all my nerddom, I've only seen the new Total Recall. I've only seen, like, oh. the first half an hour of the original Total Recall. The, the original like, I reckon so I've seen good. until, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, is in, like, some underground place and he's got a briefcase. I think he's, like, just finding out that he's lost his memory or something like that. Yeah. Spoiler alert for a fucking 40-year-old movie, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> shit happens. Is that, like, the one where the guy's got all the stuff tattooed on him? Memento? Is that it? Is that is that a remake of... I have no idea. I don't know. There's, there's one where this guy has no memory and he's just got shit tattooed all over him and, like, so he has to try and solve a mystery. Yep, I'm really good at telling stories. No, I think that's. <laughs> I, haven't I, even, think, I haven't even seen this movie. Yeah. It's just. I like... think that's um, Alzheimer's the musical. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, me I... having dementia. <laughs> but coming back to those three films, like, like if yeah, if, if I was to consider them because they, for the most part, stay true to the original source material, the only one that actually worked was Friday the Thirteenth, because Friday the Thirteenth was sort of like parts one, two, and three. Like the original parts one, two, and three kind of compressed into right. one film. Yes. Whereas whereas Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween made they both made the same fatal mistake. They changed something like too core to the original storyline. So in Halloween, like the really kind of scary thing is about Michael Myers is that you didn't really know his story. He was just some sort of like, yeah. he, he was also almost like an anathema. Like you didn't really know anything about him. And then Rob Zombie decided to give him a whole like abused and animal killing child backstory. And like, just gave him all this crap that like took away from what kind of made Michael Myers scary. Michael Myers, yeah. Yeah. And then with Friday the 13th, like I've always contested this and this is me. You know, this is a terrible thing to say, I'm sure. But everyone <laughs> likes Everyone liked uh, Freddy Krueger because he just killed teenagers. And that's just kind that's of Nightmare funny. Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street, sorry. Nightmare on Elm Street, blah, 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 blah. Same thing. Freddy yeah. Krueger just killed teenagers and that's just funny. But in the remake, they alluded to the fact that he was a pedophile. sexually interfered with them. Which was never and in that, the original. No, never in the original. And that just fucking like, so me, made, made me so mad. I was like, no. Absolutely not. Like that was so I can relate cool. to this character and now I can't. He's just a sadist, <laughs> not a sexual sadist. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. 
exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's different. <laughs> But that was the thing. As, as soon as you change that, like that, those fundamentals of the character of like why people connected to those characters or why people cheered on those characters and whatnot, you change something so vital to the core of what they are. And it was just like, it was just wrong. Like I was so like, especially like watching Friday the like yeah. Nightmare on the Street. I was so mad the whole movie. I'm like, nah, this sucks. Nah, I don't like this. Anymore. So, uh, like, yeah, nah. I, like the way I see that is, yeah, I think. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, misstep, Halloween, absolutely reboot. Friday the Thirteenth, I think, like, because Friday the Thirteenth to me personally, I think that like completely pioneered the whole like final girl situation that they do mm. in yeah. every movie now. And yeah. condensing all the movies into one was a great idea because first of all, when they made uh, when to Carpenter or Lynch that did the first Friday the Thirteenth. I can't remember now. I've got to quickly know. Google. No, it was yeah, Carpenter. But, it was Carpenter. It, yeah, it was Carpenter. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't so. know that Lynch did horror movies. I just No, maybe he, he didn't. Did but I, can't, I think, oh, yeah, 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 it's Carpenter. So, um, yeah, when when he made that, like, they, obviously they never thought they were going to make a sequel. Hmm. And then when they did the, they finished it, like, oh, how are we going to make a sequel? You know, they brought the sun into it. You know, it all got more campy, more slashy. I think mm. it was a fantastic idea to condense that into one movie because originally, like uh, Friday the Thirteenth, did well in the box office. It smashed everything. His budget for that, I th- think, it made like, um, I think he made like sixty-five million dollars with a budget of three wow. million, like unprecedented mm. profit. But the fact that in the second or the third movie, Jason becomes the face of Friday the Thirteenth, whereas yeah. the base Friday the Thirteenth, Jason's not in the first one. Like really, like it's it's Jamie, it's the it's the mother. She's the she's the slasher, like avenging her son. Spoilers. Yeah, it's it's, it's literally it's fifty years old. I don't care. <laughs> you <laughs> if don't you haven't scared seen little baby. It, yeah, if you haven't seen it. Um, no, it was it wasn't that. even it wasn't even Carpenter. I was like, no, no, it's wrong. No, it was Sean Cunningham. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, well, Carpenter, yeah. Carpenter did a slasher. John Carpenter did Halloween. John Carpenter ah, did Halloween. Yes, okay, yeah. yeah. I'm getting. I was like, yeah, I was like, because I remembered he did Halloween. I was just kind of like, hang on, did he do both of them? No, yeah, no. no Sean yeah, I'm getting my masked stabbers mixed up. Yes. <laughs> what well, was it's Halloween that made ham make. over fist money? Yeah, um, yeah. Halloween was mental. Well, what? was Halloween also the one with Jamie Lee Curtis in it as well? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe I'm um, just thinking of Halloween. I only know Jamie yeah. Lee Curtis from Freaky Friday, so yes. <laughs> also a remake. <laughs> The remake yeah. like five times. I was looking that up. I'm like, okay, first remake was good. The other four, they did one in 2014. and oh no, one in 2018. There's one coming out next year. It's like, why do you keep remaking this movie? The 2002 <laughs> one was fantastic. It's it can stay. I, I, yeah, exactly. Um, so what's what's your favorite remake, Grant? Oh, so um, my I actually I really looked hard because I'm like. I can't really think of many remakes that I'd like more than the original because if there was an original movie that I liked, it was just like, it's already good. Didn't need to be redone. Yeah. Like, I'm a sucker for like original effects and all that. But Suspiria, if anyone, if you guys oh, seen yeah. Suspiria before. So yeah. it's like, um, and Argento, it's the original ones, like all in Italian. It's like, um, a witch coven. I think it's maybe sixties, maybe seventies. Uh, yeah, so Witch Coven, Ital- it was an Italian film. The original one's all in Italian. Uh, but it's essentially this girl goes to this dancing sh- studio. She becomes like this, like, he- uh, you know, like she's like a professional ballet dancer. And it turns out like they're all witches and like heaps of like hectic shit happens. I won't go too far into it. It's a fantastic film. Pacing's good. But yeah, when they, they remade it in uh, like 2016, maybe. I didn't look up the actual mm. year. And yeah, it's so good. They got like uh, Tilda Swinton in it as well. She's always fantastic oh. in anything. Mm, um, yeah. like, there's like I didn't look up the cast. I probably should have put more down for it because I put a couple remakes down that I personally like. But yeah, Suspiria is probably like my top of my list. Yeah. Second, I've got The Longest Yard with uh, Adam Sandler. <laughs> See, I've, I've seen that movie. reported as one of the worst remakes of all nah, time. I like, I've seen that. Loved listed. it. I don't like. I guess it's a, like a nostalgia thing as a young kid. Like I, I loved that movie. And my third I had down was Death Race with Death Jason Race Statham. Yeah. Yes, I didn't even know that was a remake. So I yeah. really enjoyed that. But I feel like a lot of movies that I've watched, the remakes didn't need to exist. I feel like the originals were good enough and they've just been 
remade to have like updated graphics but i feel like it's just it loses the soul a lot of horror movies like psycho texas chainsaw massacre and stuff like Um, remaking it without bringing in anything my whole like worst remake (laughs) list because i couldn't think of bad remakes i could just think of of remakes that didn't exist but i'm sure we'll get there later but yeah it's filled with horror movies (laughs) (laughs) have you got some worst remakes josh uh, well, are we talking like, are we talking favorite ones or worst ones? Cause I got, oh, I got go a list favorite of ones first. Oh well, yeah. Favorite. Right. So favorite. I mean, favorite ones. I've already said most of them. Like obviously the mummy oceans 11, uh, the fly Cronenberg's the fly, uh, in 86. The one with Jeff Goblin is actually a remake of like a no, late fifties, I think oh, 58 true. horror film. Uh, and that was just, oh, that was, I think the same thing as you were saying before, it needed to be updated for I did the, not know that was a remake. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was originally a short story and then it was, yeah, it was a film in like, yeah, the, the late fifties. Um, but yeah, it's like the, the, the effects of the eighties worked for the flight. Like that doesn't need to yeah. be remade again, but it needed to be remade from what was the possible 40s, in yes. the fifties, yeah, the fifties, the uh, into like the eighties. And so, yeah, I think mean, that's, that's an amazing film. Uh, the other one, the, the other one that I don't know if it is probably more of a reboot than a remake. Um, Grant, maybe you could judge on this one. Uh, it. I really yeah. enjoyed the new that, It films. That is in my list of remakes that didn't need to be done. Like technically it's a like it comes from a TV like a limited series, so it's I guess it's an adaption mm. because the I original guess... the, the yeah. original one is actually a TV series. I yeah, I hated the original one. I like I liked no it's like I liked the first 2 hours and 40 minutes of the original and I hate the last 8 minutes so much that it makes me mad. What happens in the last eight minutes? It's so bad. Tim Curry takes off his wig? I don't know. <laughs> that, that, yeah, I, pretty see, much. I think that Tim Curry is a far more terrifying uh, clown than Bill Skarsgård. I he's, think Skarsgård, I think, Tim, bec- yeah. I think he it's looks so way, Skarsgård, like he's like, he's obviously like, he's, he's very expressive, but I think he's, mm. his get up is so cartoony that it removes it from reality. Whereas I think the Tim Curry, like, Georgie ripping his arm off. We all float down here is way more terrifying than the scars guard. I, I can't, I can't watch it, but I have read summaries of the plot and watched very short clips of it. And fuck, I couldn't handle either <laughs> one. Let's be honest. Um, and the then it, just makes me, it makes me think of Pogo the clown. And then that's yeah. going to some dark territory. But I do like the fact that both adaptions leave out the child orgy from the book that doesn't need yeah, to be in this. Excuse me? Ah, yeah. yeah, the Stephen King book, they are, uh, for some reason, after they, like, beat the clown when they're kids before he comes back when they're adults, they're like, yo, we're all children. Let's just have an orgy. <laughs> it's fucked. Pause for effect. Yeah. Ah. Uh... <laughs> uh, nothing like k- killing a killer clown to make you Horny. feel... Horny. Good. <laughs> okay, let's move off that. <laughs> Mar- Maggie, what about you though? What What are some of uh, your top remakes? Um, look, honestly, I just wrote down the Mummy with good. Brenda Fraser. I yeah. I fucking loved it. So um, good. and like I was then I just went down a hole reading about like the Mummy being filmed. Um, Sylvester Stallone was offered the role. <laughs> He's way too old. I'm sorry. Like, no, it just no, wouldn't no. fit. I mean, have you seen Brendan Fraser now? He's, you know, uh, he looks, I don't know. Yeah, but, but he's, um, it, the mummy came out 20 years ago. And um, the Literally. Chick, who's, who's the, who's the one who plays Evie? Uh, uh, oh, what's really her name? hot. Rachel Weisz. Yeah, Rachel yeah. Weisz. Um, I was going to say that, but I didn't want to be wrong. She was the only person considered for the role. <laughs> which I thought was Fair. very cool. But, and um, plus, it, like, all the Amotep memes that I have now. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, you know the one they were filming that Brendan came out in the Anuk Suanum getup? Um, so, you know, like, that hot mesh suit that she wears with yeah. the gold body paint? He got it into that and then walked out to, like, the Amotep guy and, like, did, like, the sexy <laughs> walk and he was just like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. But apparently they ended up going with... Um, Brendan Fraser because he had the right amount of not taking himself too seriously and that they were like it's so important for this role so yeah I feel like Sylvester doesn't do comedy 
<laughs> what? Well, like he does like one liner action comedy, whereas I think uh, like Brendan's like sarcastic wit shows a lot yeah. more in that film. George of the but, Jungle. But like it's still campy enough, and yeah, he's hot as fuck. So. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, All right, Maggie, what if we fl- what if we flip it around then? If not if not the best, what what are the worst remakes for you then? Um, the Mummy. Point Break. <laughs> Why the fuck would you remake I, it yeah. without Keanu? No Keanu, yeah. no interest. No. I, I was while doing research, I didn't even realize that they'd made a remake of that, and was actually fucking shocked. Let's yeah. be real though, like I love Keanu Reeves, but he has the acting emotion of a potato. Like Whoa. he's not, he is not a good actor. Step, he's not good. Step off, absolutely he's, not. What? Go back and watch any movie. Like if you can put your nostalgia aside, like even like I love The Matrix, I love Point Break, but he cannot act. You know how hot he's, he is? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, he is good looking. Yeah, he's he's an attractive yeah, he's man. A very babe. attractive man. Like he's only good in John Wick because he plays himself. <laughs> very good as well. Um, yes, other other shit act. remakes. Um, RoboCop with. Like yeah, why? Was, yeah, garbage. why? Really the original was perfect. The original was already campy and amazing. Mm. Anyway, and they went um, serious, and you can't have it. And so you know how Disney is doing all of its fucking live action remakes. I'm I'm getting on a spiel here. So I've only watched one, and that was Mulan because I wasn't like a Disney princess girl. I was like a I like Sword in the Stone and um stuff like that. Um, you want to so, be like a cauldron? Is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I I liked I liked Milan because it had really good songs. I wanted someone to make a man out of me. And I wanted to, I thought I was a I thought I was a boy. So you um, go anyway, through. it's it's the only one I've seen, but I don't understand this need for like this animation famous company to make live action remakes. Like mm. and so much of the Disney magic mm. is forcing unreasonable body standards on young women. <laughs> and that's just really unachievable if you're not animating it because unless you're CGIing their waist down and then like the other magic comes from, you know, like magic shit happening or like talking animals and stuff like that. And you're not going to get that in the CGI in the movies without it being CGI. And I just, but Disney owns the rights to the Muppets. And if they were doing Muppet remakes of all of the Disney classics, I would be (laughs) so on board for that. That would be fucking great. Why haven't they done that? Like I, yeah. I, I can see, like in, um, in one hand, I can see the monetary reason why Disney's remaking all these old films because they're trying to reach like today's children with their classic tales. But yeah. at the same time, like, Sexist you can't tales. Catch, yes, absolutely, Pocahontas, <laughs> uh, genocidal tales. Um, they're mine. Uh, uh, Peter uh, Pan and that fucking problematic. In- um, Indian scene. <laughs> the, oh. It's all bad. Like really, if you look at our past, it's all bad. There's no point picking out any of it because it's all bad. Like, but um, yeah. yeah, I feel like, like say like Mulan, for example, like the dragon, like you cannot replicate the emotion. Eddie Murphy. Just even, yeah, the, or Eddie Murphy for one, absolutely. Yeah. But the emotion that is in the eyes of all these, like these like cell shaded 2D animated characters you can't replicate that with 3D. It doesn't come off the same. No. You get like you get a weird like not even uncanny uncanny valley. You get like a, just a weird just like over expression like fucking Elvin and the Chipmunks garbage going on <laughs> instead of <laughs> like it doesn't have the heart and soul of like what 2D am- animation had. And I feel like some movies are fine. Like what is the issue with 2D animation? I think it's fine. I think it perfectly can, can I convey love 2D things. animation. Like Avatar yeah. as a prime example. As an adaption we'll, we'll get to we'll it. Get into that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like just yeah. Go home, M Night Shyamalan. Lama Ding Dong. <laughs> um. So what? What's what's your worst remake, then, Grant? <laughs> uh, well, I I couldn't really think of many worst remakes because I think like for my criteria of what's a reboot is like if you do a remake bad enough for me, it's a reboot because you, <laughs> you, you've changed. You just it. missed uh, that badly. <laughs> yeah, like the top of my list, Jumanji. Trash. Yeah, yeah, true. Oh, yeah, they, they remade them, haven't they? With like The Rock and, and Kevin Hart. But that I don't know. I tried watching one of them, and from what I could tell, they're all body swapped or something. <laughs> and and they're so in a video confused. game, and like, yeah, I think it's Jack Black, uh, uh, The Rock, Kevin Hart, and this it's girl. Just like, bad. So, yeah, it does doesn't yeah. stand up to like Kirsten Dunst, uh, Robin Williams, and. The rest of the cast, I can't quite remember off the top of my head. The original, but then, yeah, movie. like in my list, like, as we talked about before, I've got like probably more remakes that didn't need to happen. We got Carrie, 
Pet Cemetery. Like the new Pet Cemetery is not bad, but it's so close to the original. Like, it just didn't need to be remade. Mm. Yeah. I think it was just like a, a waste. The Poltergeist didn't need to be remade. The Fog True. didn't need to be remade. Freaky Friday didn't need to be remade. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. It, pretty much everything we talked about, it was on my list, didn't need to be remade. I don't Charlie think. and the Chocolate Factory. I, that was the Ch- top. Ch- that was yeah. my original Charlie one, Chocolate but I thought more of it as a reboot. Didn't need to be. Yeah, it, yeah. It, that's technically a reboot because it's not even a musical. Like, it's literally yes. just like. Yeah, so like I took that. That was the first thing on my list. Like, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I took it off because I thought maybe it's a reboot. And Charlie's Angels is another one that I mean, and, didn't really And technically, it's okay. Charlie and the Chocolate what? Factory, not Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, yes. which was the original. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it is a different thing, but. Yeah, it's still okay. Which which Charlie's Angels we talking? Because Charlie's Angels, early two thousands one. Yeah, but the the most recent remake, like in the last like five six years. I I was gonna put that on my list, but then I was like, I haven't watched it, so. I my my partner and I watched it, and it was just like. It's got the girl from Twilight in there, right? Yeah, I can't remember. Just imagine her being so not memorable, like like, compared to like um, Drew Barrymore, Lucy Liu, Cameron Diaz, and Lucy Liu. And who was my, um <laughs> fun oh, fact? Who was, who was the handler? My handler? dad. Um. Oh, uh, it, Bill Murray was the original handler. Um. Yes. But no, I've I've seen those movies probably a thousand times, and I used to want to be Drew Barrymore when I was a kid. And once I was riding in the boot of the car, you know, because this was like the early two thousands, and I lived in the country town. So you know, we're all going somewhere. I'm in the boot of the car, and then I like in the movie, she like flips off the security camera and does like two fingers, and it's like ah. Um, I did that the car behind us dad turned around saw me smacks me across the head I was like Whoa! <laughs> and uh okay was, so <laughs> like you were in like a hatchback or a like a like yeah. a wagon you yeah, weren't like awesome. you weren't like trapped in the boot of the car sweating to death that makes me feel better I'm like wow I thought yeah, I had a bad childhood but then you talked it immediately you guys are just that. there like oh, what, what's Foggy been through a lot um, <laughs> uh, Wolf Gosh. Creek apparently oh Wolf Creek yeah Wolf, is, Wolf, is Wolf Creek a remake what no, um, no. I just I mean you being with... trapped in the boot in a yeah. cu- in the country. Yeah, Josh, yeah, let's hear your worst roommates <laughs> instead of my childhood tales. Uh, yeah, um, I think I kind of used those three as the example. Like, yeah, the Nightmare on from Halloween, Friday the Thirteenth. But I think like the, the the I mean the other one, the the one that has to be said. It was mentioned in passing before, but Gus Van Sant's Psycho is like just bad because it's just shot for shot. Like like Gus Van Sant's yeah. such a t- and it's like an example of like a really talented director doing just hot trash as well. Cause Gus Van Sant is a, you know, is a renowned director. He's made some amazing he stuff. Uh, he, he did like, uh, like anti, he did some fucked up shit. He did like antichrist and shit like that. But, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. He's, he's done some amazing stuff, Chaos but yeah. Reigns. Yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. Just a shot for shot remake with Vince Vaughn as fucking Patrick Bateman. Like uh, Patrick, Patrick Bateman. Yeah, Patrick uh, Bateman. Yes, yeah, it is. is it? No, no. Patrick Bateman's American Psycho. Uh, it's someone else, that's... Bateman, in this one. Ba- um, no, yeah. Bates. Norman Bates. 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 Yeah, yeah that's Patrick Bateman. Bateman's. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Chris. Norman Bates. What's his name from American Psycho? Oh, yeah. Oh, Christian Bale. Yeah. <laughs> Christian Bale. Bale that's it. Yes. Yeah. And that mirror scene. Um, yeah. Just yeah. Just it's so fucking bad. Uh, the, yeah, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake as well is just fucking. That's the one that air- came out recently, isn't it? No, there's there's two. There's, there's, they did one back in like two thousand four ish. Yeah, two thousand and no, it was slightly. Later. I think it was two thousand and six. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, then they did one recently as well. That was just a like, nah, fucking hard pass. So on I that. heard them. The newest one was good, but I feel like there's just the same thing. Those movies don't need to be remade. They don't look better with CGI than they did with no. like the the old like fucking. Uh, like they've just oh what's it called industrial magic that's like yeah, the, yeah. That, it's that 2022 stuff. people can be a fucking script writer as a job go and yeah. fucking write a script instead of ripping off something oh, yeah. remember, remember, and I, I know that it's technically a reboot and I also like this can be the last thing before we move on and I know it's technically a reboot and I know that I haven't actually seen it but I'm already going to go out on a limb and say and I love I, I love Rob Zombie but I literally just saw the first 30 seconds of the trailer so he's he's rebooting the monsters and i watched the first 30 seconds and had to turn off the trailer because it looks that fucking bad you threw your computer like, out the window didn't you i you literally gonna go, <laughs> like send them emails like they did for sonic when they thought he had weird teeth pretty much <laughs> pretty much 
no, no, it just, everything about it just looks so bad. I was so disappointed because I was really excited because I know that he's like, he's a huge horror fan. And like, I love, like House of a Thousand Corpses is one of my favorite horror movies. Devil's Reader. That movie scared the shit well. out of me. I did it's not enjoy so that. so good. Um, but yeah, the, like literally I got halfway through the ad and had to turn it off because the ad made it look so fucking bad that I just got mad. So, oh my God. Yeah. I, I am, uh, I'm projecting towards a future episode where I probably go on a massive rant after forcing myself to watch the monsters remake, uh, reboot. Uh, but yeah, don't, we can all watch movies. Watch that we dread. Do you guys, do you guys <laughs> want to talk about, do you guys want to talk about hypothetical remakes that would make you happy or sad? Yeah. I, uh, let's, let's start, let's start with anger mm-hmm. and then we'll get how we'll, we'll, we'll end on the happy note. So, uh, maybe Grant, what, what remake would make you, I, I've, I've used the term, what remake would cause you to riot? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's a different one. I thought we were going to do what would we love to see remake? Yeah. I, th- I think we'll do that last. So then we, we, we oh, end okay, on a positive yeah. note. So oh, we're well, going to get the, the ang- get the uh, anger yeah. out of the way first. <laughs> this, come, this came to me They're immediately. I didn't even have to think about this. Like what I, what would cause a riot if it was remade? Harry Potter, absolutely true. The <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna of, make you angry in a few yeah, minutes. Yeah, of those characters, <laughs> are a t- like I know it's not the same to the books, but I feel like those are just somehow the those characters are tethered to those actors, and I feel like yeah. you watched it again. Yeah. To me, I don't think I could see it the same. <laughs> but yeah, you can you can Great, go. Great, yeah, I'm gonna yeah, yeah. I'm gonna ride there with you. But uh, all right, Maggie, we're going to what what would make you ride then? Lord of the Rings. The oh Lord no, I yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah, Lord of the Rings. Um, oh no, absolutely. it's 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 uh, which ones I'd like to see a remade that's going to make you angry. But even oh, though remember. technically Lord of the Rings was a remake of the original animated movie, hmm. um, but they did a really good job in there because there are some like direct shout outs to the animated movie, like when they're all hiding underneath the roots on the mm. side of the road when the black rider stops above yeah. them and it like gets down and he sniffs. Oh. Um, that's actually a direct like image shot for shot of the um, animated movies um, that were made by um, like the Rankin Bass ones that were made in the seventies. Mm. So yeah. I didn't know about um, that. Yeah. And like, um, and, but like the Rankin Bass ones, Oh, that's, that's a talk for adaptations. Cause that wasn't <laughs> that big. But um, yeah, but you know, like I think if anyone remade the Lord of the Rings movies without, using that soundtrack which mm. and with and the only way it could be better is if they made them longer <laughs> True. i think you'd just have to put a fourth days. movie in there i think you need to put in like another two yeah. actually they should make it seven um because the books are technically seven books so yeah and, and, and they the should do the, co- the correct ending of return of the king because that ending is i've told people about that ending and people think i'm making it up they don't think it actually ends the way it does in the book. I explained yeah. it, and then people like where, you, where no. they go. Where they go back to um, yeah. the Shire, With the, raising, the raising, the raising of the Shire. No one actually believes yeah. that actually happened when I've told them. <laughs> You're like, oh, that's that's another conversation. Uh, Josh, yeah. what do you want to? See? Uh, what what's uh, going to cause uh, you to riot? Again, same same as Grant. This this came to me very very quickly. The Warriors. You can't remake the film The no, Warriors. No. It is what's the one Warriors? Of, I've re- it's it's one of the just the best indie films ever made. It's about like uh in like New York City in the eighties, like like gangs all over town have like their own little like boroughs sort of things, and they organize this big meetup in the Bronx, and someone shoots like the main guy in charge. And they blame it on this gang called the Warriors, and the Warriors have to get from the Bronx back to Coney Island, which is the bottom of New York, while every single gang in the entire town is hunting them down, and it is fucking perfect it is so well done in every single way that there is there is no way that anyone could do it even if they even if it was Zack Schneider you know making nods to the original it would get fucked up it's one of those things that could only be done in the 80s could not be done now Mm. everything about like modern technology would fuck it up it's just I feel like even like today's like social context you couldn't get away Mm. with making that film true absolutely not no, but That's yeah, a... it, it is. I mean, like, you, know, you one could argue that technically it is a remake because it's, it's, I mean, 300 is technically the remake of it because it's based on the, uh, it's, yeah, it's based on the loose idea of Leonidas and the 300, uh, with yeah. enemies on all side, blah, 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 blah. But yeah. it is, it, it is, yeah, you know, it, it is an Escape, interpretation. Of that. Yeah. I was yeah. Say, don't get, it, go, don't get me into the Shinfo on, on 300. 
<laughs> oh yeah. my god. Uh, Do you want to talk history? <laughs> there was way more than 300 of them. There was 300 Spartans, but there was a lot more Greeks there than the Spartans. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it, it would be impossible to do. You could not do it. And I would like, I would take this pen and do just straight into the eyeball of anyone who tried kind of thing. It is, it, it is a, a perfect film. It really is. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, now we've got the anger out of the way. Let, let's, let's go around the table again. Again, Grant, what, what would you, what would you love to see remade? Alien Covenant. I think the CGI ruined that movie. And if it had the practical effects that I know were made for the movie and all the props that I know were made for the movie, it would be so much better than it was. Cause like it just baby Yoda ru- puppets, like that kind of a thing. No, Is well, so like, um, I've got like, I, I guess like through the music scene of Australia, like the, there was a band called Exposures and mm. their guitarist, Tristan Lucas, he did the, uh, the prosthetics for a lot of Alien Covenant. Shout and out like Tristan. Just, I know Tristan as well. He's the best. Yeah. I, I don't know him. you, Tristan, but I want to get him Hi. as a guest on here. I want to uh, talk ab- about prop making in general. But yeah, I know yeah. that just from seeing like his reaction to the final cut of this film about how they've CGI'd over so much of like the heart, like the prosthetics, you know, the heart of a- a- the alien universe, you know, the guy in the suit, you know, that's like, it's the heart of alien and just like mm. all this like CGI blood, all like the little CGI stuff. I think it just ruined it. And also the fact that I went to see a double feature of Alien and Aliens before Alien Covenant came out. And in the middle, they had like a little like intermission between the movies and they showed a scene from Alien Covenant. And like my friend, like my, my friend Dinesh and I was so excited to see it. And it turns out it's like the most tense, like the best scene of the entire film. But when we saw <laughs> the film, <laughs> I'm like... I'm like, oh, that part was sick. And like the movie never got more intense than that scene. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. You showed us so, the best bit. Yes. Yeah. And we were so angry that that was the best part we saw. But I think that if that movie was remade with practical effects, because I love the idea of like artificial intelligence wanting to create perfect life because they yeah. themselves, like the only thing that they see as a deficiency in themselves is the fact that they can't pro- procreate. So, like, mm. them wanting to make the perfect life form on top of themselves, I think, is, like, a fantastic premise for a film. But I'm pretty sure just... that's the premise of the Twilight films. Vampires <laughs> is angry, she can't have babies. Oh, so, yeah, if they did more practical effects in Twilight and less sparkling wolf people and less <laughs> Taylor Lautner's <laughs> awful wig, she should just grown hair. It's not hard. Done it my whole life. <laughs> Um, For those not watching, you should see the hair that's happening. Not mine. Glorious. So. Glorious. It's beautiful. But yeah, that would be mine. How about yours, Margie? I'm guessing it's Harry Potter, so we're going to have to square up. <laughs> all right. All right. So I've got I've got two TV series that I would like to be remade. Um, and I know we've mostly been talking about movies, but these were the only things I could think of where I was like, I really want to see these remade. Xena the Warrior Princess. Oh, I would yes, like yep. to see someone try that, even if it was just a movie. I don't know. That's something I'd like to see. I explored. agree, but I feel like the charm of that is the fact that their budget was so low. And because yeah. I listened to our podcast on this and they essentially, they, so like how Lucy Liu got the part for that was they tried out everyone else, but because they wanted to shoot what? it in New Zealand for tax breaks. What? It's not Lucy Liu. <laughs> Xena Warrior Princess. Lucy oh, not Lucy Lou. Uh, Lucy Lawless. Yeah, Sorry, yeah like... not Lucy Lou. Yeah, <laughs> that's just got Charlie's Angels. Lucy Lawless. Yeah, yeah, the reason why she got the spot is because they wanted to shoot it in New Zealand, but no one from LA wanted to leave to go there because it was pilot season. So she's like, well, oh. I'm, New- I'm from New Zealand. So that's how she got it. And then she, obviously <laughs> she's like the perfect warrior princess. Yeah. And the fact She'd have that to she's be like in there as like an two. older character. Yeah. yeah because she's... she was in the Hercules series, but she played like two or three different characters in the Hercules series that like ran concurrent ah, with it. And then that's, that's how she already good. knew everyone. Cause I think who directed it? I don't know why Sam Raimi comes to mind, but I don't think it's Sam Raimi. It was someone. It looks like something um, Sam Raimi would do though. Yeah. Cause like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Uh, Sam Raimi did. Yeah. He did do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because his Sam... brother, his brother played Joxa. It's uh, yeah. Ted Raimi as Joxa. It was it Joxa. Was that his name? Maybe, yeah. So Sam Raimi yeah. did the Evil Dead. Um, uh, oh, awesome! Sa- uh, Spider Man from the early two thousand. Evil like Dead is a great campy, movie. Campy, um, low budget, but like good pull off effects. Speaking like of campy about. and low budget, that's the other series I would like to see remade. 
Sabrina the Teenage Witch, not the chilling the adventures of garbage. Sabrina where she's super hot, uh, but she's got like a magic shape-shifting cat. I want a sassy puppet cat who I can relate to on a spiritual level. And I want like the teenage witch struggles in the modern world. And I think it would be wholesome. I think you could recast some of the actresses like <laughs> Melissa Joan Hart could just be one of the aunties. I don't know. Yes. A modern Sabrina sitcom is probably what's missing from the world. And fuck it. I'm going to say it. I would love to see the Harry Potter movies remade. I think each movie should have been heaps longer. <laughs> I don't think the casting was very good. There's an Enid Blyden campiness and silliness. Enid Blyden's very problematic. Um, to the books that's not captured in the films well enough. I think the directors made it weird. Some of the directors just did trash jobs. And I know it's probably not going to be remade, though, because the uh, horrible turf who cannot be named. Um, but <laughs> yeah, like, that, that, no, yeah, they couldn't yeah, be done it, again. It's never going to happen now. But, like, fuck it. Destroy some child actors' lives. Start over again. <laughs> and, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> that's that's my angry uh, I see, I, I don't think I could imagine anyone else just, as those as those characters i just i still don't associate them i think it must be like an asd thing like <laughs> i do not associate those actors with the characters in the books like i um yeah that's a whole other topic um josh <laughs> what, what do you want to see remade i just i'm really really proud that not only did i remember that buddy uh ted rammy is in uh xena warrior princess but i haven't got his name right it is joxa it, it is very proud joxa, of that yeah. that's um, really impressive yeah that's that's the the autist coming out right there is like i do the the thing with the things and yeah well, I got, the like a bit more like um, shinfo on that show is the reason that they <laughs> made it is because they're like oh so sunday there's nothing on TV and like kids are outside. We need something to fill the dead air. So they made <laughs> warrior princess to go along with Hercules, which was like the bigger show. And then like yeah. Zena warrior princess ended up like completely obliterating the popularity of Hercules <laughs> because Sam Raimi's a genius as, and the, the cast of like Lucy Lawless and all that. And like just everything, the fact that I think it also brought in the, like the, the lesbian, population as well i like really enjoyed mm. the show because they were able to be represented through i can't remember her co her co-actor with, oh, with lucy yeah. wallace like that they laid it's like an angel but um she's like yeah, a princess they, isn't she no. oh princess yeah no i think no i think Lu, Lu, uh lucy wallace is the princess like xena but no, Gab gabrielle was gabrielle the, uh, the yeah gabrielle kid. yeah yeah so yeah, like was, they're like it's she kind was, like, of like a kick. it's great yeah they don't like show that there's a romance there like they but they allude to it very heavily and like the fact mm. that that really gave a lot of uh, representation for the like the like the lesbian i never uh, picked up populace. on that but that's that's again <laughs> well that's like that's just from like podcasts that i've listened to because i never got like i was i was a bit too young to watch xena yeah like, it wasn't really on like i saw a bit of it but it wasn't really on tv but yeah that's just like yeah apparently that was like a really big thing for push like normalizing pushing that kind of stuff but without it being mm. like forced like it's natural you know this is just how people are but yeah, yeah. sorry to cut you off with my <laughs> fixation on that no, no that's we right love, we love shinfo we're here for 100%. Yeah. We, we, we love a tangent we love a tangent but um yeah no i uh i've i've technically cheated because there's three films that i want to see remade but they're a trilogy and i just want to see the whole trilogy redone i, hey, I wholeheartedly think... believe there is a very very good story to be told in the star wars prequel trilogy i just think all the acting was fucking like all the actors were just miscast like i would recast every single actor i, I was would... gonna say the original three and then i was like i'll get beaten up oh yeah, my yeah, god no, like, you don't, no not you the dare. original three the first three yeah no yeah, yeah the, the prequels three, not the original yeah. three yeah the, the, prequels. the prequels yeah the, the yeah, yeah the the mid the, the yeah four five and six are perfect one two no, and the three there is one two three yeah yeah there there is an amazing story to be told there uh, there is brilliant characters, but nothing about those was done right. And it was, it was done too soon. Like, again, it, it was like George yeah. Lucas tried too hard with the CGI for what was available in that sort of time. I don't think it's that. I think the issue was. I think George they can make it without Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. And that would George be. George Lucas didn't have his wife telling him that what you're doing is fucking stupid. Stop it. Like he did in the original trilogy. Because whenever he did to do something, went to do something bad, she was like, ah, no, don't do that. And yeah. he, she, uh, she mustn't have had this way or maybe they had like separated by the time that they did the They They don't trilogy. need a whole movie about pod racing and mm -hmm. they See, I, spend a lot more time in the Clone Wars because the I Clone love, Wars are. I love the game Star Wars pod racing. So I'm glad that it's giving me that. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. it's I, yeah, I, I truly believe there is an amazing story to be told there, and I would love to see it redone. Yeah. But you kind of, I mean, for two reasons, you can't, obviously, because it is part of the big saga, and it would be weird just to mm. redo those three, but also because, like, I, I don't think it could be done under Disney as well. Like that's no. the other part yeah. about it. Like I, I, don't, I don't think, think Disney can do it right. Like like Kathleen Kennedy has done some amazing stuff for the Star Wars universe. I like I feel like more like so much power to her. But in the current constraints, I don't believe it would be possible to do it justice. But yeah, I I, think, I, w- I would love to see it done. I think what they have to do is they just have to go. Okay, Skywalker's are done. Let's go in the way way back machine to Old Republic and do mm. some shit there. Because that's what they did with mm. the games. Like when like Coda came out, like not to the old Republic, essentially George Lucas said to them, okay, you can make a game, but it either has to be Clone Wars or, bef- or and you're going to have all these restraints. And like, oh, well, how about if we go like 4,000 years way back where we don't have Sorry, to worry about all the shit you're making off. with the prequels <laughs> yeah. and then you can make your own story. And then they made a fantastic story. So if you saw like, Knights of the Old Republic, like a tangent in a movie yeah. saga, that'd be great. Or even the game story, because it's got such a fantastic payoff in a movie. That I reckon that would be, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I think, I think, yeah, let's not go too far down the Star Wars rabbit hole because I think that's a <laughs> yeah. fucking episode in itself. But um, I'm glad that someone else had the same thought, but I didn't put mm. it in because I was weak. <laughs> uh, and instead I put in Harry Potter, the beloved movies of several yes. it was, it Probably more rabid fan base. Yeah, I, I think you've probably pissed off more people by saying that than with Star Wars, to be honest, Margie. So well, well I could piss off a few people because <laughs> like a, w- from when I grew up, like I grew up with the prequels coming out at a young age. So for me, they actually are nostalgic. Nostalgic, but yeah. like, I saw them in the cinemas. Like yeah, movies. I remember it. Like, yeah, they're, they're kind of like kids. Me, I still, I still think Revenge of the Sith is a good movie. I think Attack of the Clones pacing is hot garbage. Yeah, <laughs> and Phantom of the Menace is just boring until the end. But it also gave us the Duel of Fates, which is our intro to the podcast. Yeah. So we can't make fun of it too much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it has given us some good stuff and like some good, like, like I said, the characters are there. The sound is there. The story is there, but it was the script and the acting that really kind of let. I still think Ewan yeah. McGregor yeah. is a fantastic. Oh, Ewan oh, McGregor McGregor's is probably the yeah, exception that proves the rule. Like, oh, and funnily the enough, actor. Darth Maul, the actor that plays Darth Maul was the stunt actor because the actual actor quit. So that's yeah. why he has no lines in the first movies because the stunt actor couldn't do... Um, he doesn't need lines, couldn't do that. Like, yeah, well, that's the thing. He used to have heaps of lines, but they cut them all because the stunt actor couldn't do like the voice acting afterwards. So they're just like, <laughs> well, fuck it. He's, I guess he's just a mute. <laughs> <laughs> it's but I think that's... That's a, I mean, that's a, that's a, a good place to kind of round out our uh, what I've called remaking magic uh, episode. But you know, as we do every single week, we've been having a lot of fun putting questions out there. You know, to kind of uh, you know to, to get you the listener involved, I guess, but also because I like hearing uh, my dear co-host opinions on some weird and wonderful questions. Um, and I was guys, like, you guys also have really good answers. Like <laughs> there are well thought out arguments and stuff. I just got to say, keep it up. <laughs> yeah. There, there's been some great ones. So every, every Friday after the podcast comes out, we post on the, uh, the Instagram and on the Facebook as well. The, the question we're asking now. So jump on and, and leave an answer. <coughs> Yum. Um, spicy. Even if you listen and get to it retro, retro, uh, yeah. retroactive listening, you know what I mean. Yeah. Fucking come 100%. back to it. Bring the They're always back. there. They're always there. Absolutely. But um, yeah. The this this <laughs> this question I wrote after working like twelve hours straight and thought it was ridiculous, and Margie loved it, so I've left it in there. Um, so I'm I'm putting it to you two. This is a would you rather because I love a good would you rather, and this is would you rather Mario edition. Would you rather? Uh, live in a world where flowers shoot fireballs at you or large quote unquote anthropomorphic turtles exist that constantly steal your girlfriend. <laughs> so so I did. Ha- I had a deep think about this and like my <laughs> first, like my, my natural thought is like, oh man, obviously the turtles are awful. But then, like, I just let it simmer and, like, stood back from it, looked at it from a worldview. I'm like, all right, living in Australia, obviously, bushfires, massive issue. And I'm I went like, the well, same place. I'm like, obviously, 
plants that shoot fire are like going to be awful for the like our ecological system. Like it's gonna it's gonna burn everything down. You know, it's gonna cause all these issues. You know, like all the only thing that's going to exist is these fire plants if they don't burn each other down. I don't know if they're like f- like flame retardant. Like I don't know. I don't know. That's that's a good point. But, what um, would vegans yeah. eat? Oh, nothing. Fire. Should I had starved to death. Yeah. <laughs> dirt, I guess, would be all that's left. Scorched dirt. Or I'm and then like on the other hand, I'm like in a weird way, the world would be safer with just one fire spitting giant turtle rather than a world full of flaming flowers. <laughs> yeah, so I I'm definitely going anthropomorphic turtle that steals my girlfriend because one, I don't have a girlfriend or a significant (laughs) other except for my cat. And two, I've been waiting my whole damn autistic life for anthropomorphic animals. I don't care if they're good or bad. Their alignment doesn't matter. I want anthropomorphic animals. (laughs) And then I started thinking about the fire flowers and just was like, yeah, like um, global warming. We've seen, you know, um, like the wildfires in California, et cetera. But then you have to consider that fire is used in traditional land management practices. So maybe that would be a good thing. Like do these fire flowers suddenly appear or have they always existed and our <laughs> ecosystems evolved around the fire flowers so that the ecosystem that we have yes. is dependent upon the fire flowers. And then all that happens is sometimes you're walking down the street and you get burnt, but then it would end up like, would there be like a st- species extinction? And then I went too far. <laughs> I really started thinking about like the scientific like ecosystem that would exist around fire flowers. And- it is like when, when you brought up like the California. If you could fires, draw it, draw yeah. it. I do. I do like to think that the funny thing about that is the fact that they have all those terrible fires is because we gave them gum trees. That's why <laughs> it's the gum trees. In like 1908, we gave them like hundred thousand gum trees, and they planted them all because like it just like that's the kind of climate they thrive in. But no yeah. one knew back then the fact that the, the way that they spread oh, and regrow is from being on fire. Like, that yeah. if, even if they're near fire, they combust and then their ashes seed new gum trees. The only Australia. way that they, they exist through being set on fire. That's how Australia is. Our trees spawn <laughs> and grow by being set on fire. It's, it's oh, insane. yeah. <laughs> but I do, I do have a few other ones that could be good if we're taking shit from the Mario world. <laughs> size changing mushrooms could be really fun but also True. depending how many mushrooms you have of what variety you kind of can think that you've changed size yeah <laughs> and, I, I, was say, I think they already do that <laughs> yeah um or warp, warp pipes would be really fun warp like, pipes would be sick hang on my cat scratching at my door jeez <laughs> what? what about a yoshi <laughs> yoshi would be sick yoshi that's would be sick you could just that's technically ride around Mario, a dinosaur it? So this is a hard one for me because like I've never been a Mario person. Uh, like I like I've played like Super Smash Brothers. I've that's been into that, but I, I've never. Yeah, I hate plumbers. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> what about if we all wore matching outfits? Would that be cute? That sounds expensive. <laughs> As a side note, the uh, the nineties. A Super Mario Brothers movie with John Leguizamo and Bob Hoskins is fucking incredible. And the little, little. I think there should be a remake of it. And and (laughs) and Bowser, the yeah, the Koopa Troopers, the fucking oh Jesus Christ, they're so good. They're remaking that right now, though, aren't they? They're making another movie, and for some reason, like every other piece of garbage, has got Chris Pratt in it. Better not. Oh, that's isn't, a I'm pretty sure it does. Like a weirdly religious. Are you Scientologist? I'm pretty sure. Oh, fucking who isn't? It's Hollywood. Um, on that yeah. note, what would you, the audience rather, uh, fire flowers and also pitch, <laughs> pitch to us how they might exist in the environment? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm ready. I mean, maybe gum trees. I'd are love to see flowers. your ecological studies on how yeah. the fire flowers I would, I would love work. to go to a garden show and just be like, oh, it's so pretty. And then you just see someone like get fireballed and then just like <laughs> running across the lawn, just like, ah, and you're like, oh, fucking tourists. Um, Honestly, the mortal enemy of the gum tree. <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it so you got to follow uh northside nerds on instagram and on facebook uh you can find the link in the show notes uh to our social media uh and uh le- i mean you can leave a comment if you're listening on uh youtube as well uh you can leave a comment uh on the youtube looking for love in the want. comment section <laughs> looking for love in the comment section and let us know yeah would you rather uh, exist in the real world, flowers that shoot fireballs at you or a large anthropom- anthropomorphic turtles that constantly steal your girlfriend. Uh, I'll have some amazing Photoshop job done up for this. Uh, you know it's going to be As good. long as like- they're not stealing my cat, then I'm happy. <laughs> well, I mean, he might. You never, ever know.